Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to Resort Originals. My name is Austin and we're going to be going over everything that's going to take for you guys to become a competitive battler and I guess a shiny hunter as well because we're kind of able to combine the both of the two if you're getting ready for competitive as well. So if you guys are interested in this kind of video, sit back, relax, get yourself a juice box, some snacks, hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe and we're going to be going over all this in this video. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to be going over is the location that you need to battle Leon. And the reason why you need to battle Leon, which is actually at the battle tower. So it's the second time you battle him. The second time you battle him, you need to go take him on in the battle tower to be able to check the IVs of your Pokemon, which is super important because your Pokemon needs to have max IVs. So you go to talk to this girl, which is basically the person that you talk to when it comes to doing or ranking up throughout the battle tower. So you can do single or you can do double. I decided to do double. Once I make the Pokeball tier of rank five, you get a chance to battle Leon. After you beat him, that's when you're able to go and I'll actually show you guys right here. So if I click my Pokemon and I'll go hit R to go to boxes, you guys will see that you guys can see the stats that are under my Pokemon. So right now I'm breeding a Rookity and I right here, for example, this one has four best stats. That means as four max IVs of 31. Now you guys are able to check this in case, let's say, oh, I, I don't see it. Mainly, you just have to hit the plus button and it will show you the different aspects that you're able to use when you are in the box. Unfortunately, you can't do it when you're in your party. You actually have to go to the box to see it. I keep the judge right here. I keep it like this all the time because that's literally what I'm using for all of my breeding. And then one last thing when it comes to battling Leon. Now, if you don't feel like you have a competitive team, that's OK. You can actually talk to this guy right here and you can just get a team that's lended to you and they're actually pretty good teams you have a lot of different options to choose from i think i did the the skill team and that has like the top tier pokemon like tyrantar gyarados um duraludon so like there's a lot of good pokemon there and you, you just basically rank up to be able to get the points about leon once you battle leon that's when you can kind of start looking at the stats and get yourself ready for breeding so let's get to the breeding part so i'm going to meet you guys in the wild area so in the wild area, I'm going to fly directly here, which is right by the nursery. And the nursery is going to be super important because this is where you're going to do all of the breeding. So when it comes to breeding, the first thing you have to figure out is what Pokemon do I want to breed? The Pokemon you want to breed, it doesn't matter what it is. You can pick whatever Pokemon it is. But you want to start out with a Pokemon that has decent stats. And the way to get a Pokemon that already starts out with decent stats is through Dynamax battles or Gigantamax battles. With those battles, you have the ability to get Pokemon with max IVs. Now, the Dynamax battles and the Gigantamax battles have different star ratings. One being the worst, five star being the best. The higher the stars, the higher chance you have to get multiple max IVs. And the next thing that's important is worrying about a Ditto. So Ditto, you're also able to get the max IVs. So I'm actually going to show you guys exactly where to do the max Ditto raid. So I'm going to go right over here. I could probably go on my bike, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. This is where you are able to do the max ditto raid. Now, you're also able to get ditto another way, and that is with the yellow aura surrounding it. If you go to the Lake of Outrage, which I will show you on the map. I don't want to go all the way over there because it's going to take a little bit. But you basically get to go to this area right over here, and there is a chance for a ditto to spawn. Now, you don't want a regular Ditto. You want a Ditto with the yellow aura. That means it has max stats that are within that Pokemon. For me, I've encountered every time I've ran into two Dittos over there, and they both have had at least three max stats. So I started to use them to do the breeding. Another important part when it comes to the aura around them or the Dynamax and Gigantamax battles is that they have the chance of hidden abilities. And hidden abilities are really important because you want to use that specific Pokemon to be competitive in battling where they there might be a Pokemon that you want, but it's not going to be used to its full potential without its hidden ability. And that's where you need to get it. And you have the exact chance or you just have a good chance to be able to get that hidden ability through the max raids or when the Pokemon has the hidden or the aura around them. Now, if you want to do the breeding for Pokemon, this is actually new where you are able to have the hidden ability with both the male or female counterpoint or counterpart of the Pokemon that you're trying to breed. If Female has a 60% chance to send down the hidden ability and the male, I think it's 50. Don't quote me on that, but I know for a fact that the female is 60% to be able to send down the ability. 
just both the male and the female have that chance to do so. Now, I'm going to show you guys an exploit that you're actually able to do with this game. Now, there always is a chance that you might corrupt your save file. I haven't heard anything of that yet, but it's just important to mention for the fact that we are exploiting the game. So what you would do is, I don't really need to do it right now, but I'll show you guys specifically how to do it. So basically you need to put the, I'll, I'll click this. You wanna throw a wishing piece into the well. And what I also suggest is turning your text onto slow. The second you throw the wishing piece into the well, you see that light go up. If it's a red light, you're going to hit home. If it's a purple light where it has the clouds around it, you're also gonna hit home, but you're gonna to wanna to stay there. For example, if you get a red light, you hit the home button. If you do not like the red light, which you should not, you're looking for the purple cloudy light because that's going to be a much stronger ditto that you would run into. So what you need to do is if you don't get the one you want, you hit the home button, you need to do it like right away, you need to be ready for it, and then you exit out of the game and then you go back into it and you have another chance. So basically you just keep resetting to be able to get the ditto that you want. Now, the ethics aside, you can decide how you feel about that, but if you're looking for a little bit of a shortcut where you don't want to take forever to be able to get the ditto, that is going to be the way to do it. Now let's go into egg hatching. So if we go back over here, it actually really doesn't matter that I'm going back over here, but I mean, this is where you're able to do the egg hatching. So one thing that's important to note is you wanna get the oval stone, which is something that you're able to go to in Winchester town or Sir Chester town, not Winchester, and you are able to go into the hotel, which you would battle the game director of Shigeki Morimoto, I believe. And with that, if you beat him, you get the Oval Stone, which allows you to be able to breed Pokemon a lot faster than what you normally would. So I definitely suggest doing that. So if we talk to her, I actually, I might have an egg. There we go. I will take that right now, actually. Thank you. I'm going to go do that. And if I want to hatch this egg a lot faster than what I normally would, you'd want the Pokemon with the Steam Engine ability. And that would be with this guy. Oops. That would be with this guy right here, Colossal. So Colossal has the ability of Steam Engine. It doesn't say specifically here, but this is a and another this is another ability that allows you to be able to hatch eggs faster. This is the most accessible Pokemon I believe that you are able to use to be able to hatch the eggs. So he's always in my party with me to be able to really hatch these eggs as soon as humanly possible. Now the next thing I want to go over is the Destiny Knot. With the Destiny Knot, it allows you to transfer more than at least three max IVs to the new Pokemon or to the offspring. And what I normally do is I put that onto the Ditto. And then with the other Pokemon that I'm trying to breed, I put the Everstone on it because I want to make sure that I have the exact same nature that of the Pokemon that I'm breeding and sending it to the offspring. Now, obviously, if you don't have the nature you want, it can be random. Don't put the Everstone on it because you're not gonna get the uh, the nature that you want. So that is a no-no. Now, another thing that's important when it comes to breeding your Pokemon are egg moves. One thing that they did change with this game that's actually a fantastic addition to the game is that you can pass egg moves to parent Pokemon. So what you can do, actually, they're technically not even parent Pokemon. So if you use two Pokemon of the same species and you put them into the nursery and one of the Pokemon has an egg move that you're trying to transfer over to another Pokemon, what you need to do is to only have or at least only have one open spot for moves on that other Pokemon that you're trying to transfer the egg to. All you really have to do from there is just ride your bike around a little bit. Come back, take the Pokemon out that you want to learn that egg move, and it should know that egg move by the time you pull it out, which is a really fantastic feature, so you don't have to go through breeding to be able to make that happen. The next thing I want to do is go over Natures. Now, Natures help strengthen the Pokemon in specific areas and its stats. To specifically choose where you want that nature to go, you're going to need Pokemon to be able to help you out to control that. Now, I suggest getting the Pokemon Routes or Mana. They both have the synchronize ability, which allows that Pokemon that you would be battling, has to be a wild Pokemon that you're trying to catch, to have a 50% chance to have the same nature as the Pokemon you are using. So I have, if I have a modest Ralts and I'm going to battle a wild Pokemon, that Pokemon has a 50% chance to have the same nature as my Ralts. So if I'm looking for modest Pokemon, that's the direction I want to go. Now there is another direction that you can do to control the nature, which is brand new to Pokemon Sword and Shield, is through mints. Now you're able to get those mints 
through battle points. So if you go back into the Winden Tower, or back in Winden, you're able to go to the Battle Tower and gain those battle points used to grab mints. Now, they're pretty expensive, so it is a little bit of a grind to make that happen, but if you have a Pokemon that is perfect, the only thing you need to do is change the nature, that's the direction I suggest you go. Now, if you're looking for specific natures to get, I would suggest using Modest, Adamant, Timid, Jolly, and I guess those would be the those would be the four. There's others that are valuable, but the ones that you see most would be those four natures. So if you can get four routes that have those four natures and the synchronized ability, you're going to be in good shape. And last thing about the routes, the highest chance that you have to be able to get that routes with the synchronized ability is if it has that yellow aura around it, as I mentioned before. So you have a chance to get that hidden ability with it. So the next thing I want to go over are EVs. EVs are something that you can max out a Pokemon with to be able to really get to its full potential. Now, there's multiple ways to be able to get those max EVs, and most of it actually is literally right here in the Pokemon Center. So what I want to do is I want to talk to this person right here. So I have the ability to get, I scroll down a little bit more, a HP up, protein, iron, calcium, zinc, and carbose. Now, those vitamins can be maxed out on your Pokemon to be able to get the max potential out of it. So if I want to get max HP, I'm going to need 26 of these HP ups. Now they cost two battle points each. So you guys can do the math there. It's going to take a little bit for you to do that. So you're going to be spending a lot of time in the battle tower to be able to make that happen. But don't fret. This is not the only direction that you can go to be able to max out your Pokemon's potential stats. So what we're going to do is we are going to go right over here and we can talk to Rotom and we are going to actually go to the Pokey Jobs. With the Poke Jobs, you have potential to be able to get to the Pokemon to gain stats this way as well. So I have the HP, Attack, Defense, Special Attack, Special Defense, and Speed. So if I just read what it says here, we've started offering a seminar. We we've started offering a seminar that'll increase speed-based points. We're looking for students to prove its effectiveness. Pokemon wants it up to ten raises speed. So what this does is every hour the Pokemon gets boosted four EVs as they are doing the pokey job so you can always use this to be able to improve your pokemon strength this direction as well so this is a valuable tool at the same time now the last way to be able to control where the evs are going with your pokemon is to battle pokemon and they're actually pretty accessible early on into the game but we're pretty much all doing this post game anyways right so on route one you're able to get scovet and with scovet it allows you to gain your evs and hp so the next pokemon is choodle and that controls the evs for your attack you can catch this pokemon on route two lakeside so next would be roly coley which can control the defense evs and you can get that in the galar mine and the giant's cap and then for the special attack it would be ghastly which you're able to get in the wild area more specifically the watchtower ruins and for special defense it would be gossifleur which you can catch on route three and then finally you have rookie for the speed on route one now i'm sure you guys are interested in the shinies as well so we will be going over that right now for shinies the first thing i suggest is trying to get a foreign ditto now, the ditto just needs to be foreign to the other Pokemon that you are trying to breed with. So, if I have a Japanese ditto and I have an English or American Vulpix, that will be able to give my Pokemon a higher chance for the shiny. But the first thing I suggest you do for shiny hunting is to be able to complete your Pokedex. If you complete your Pokedex, you will actually be able to... There's so many things, actually, that goes down in uh, Sir Chester. So, if you go to Sir Chester and you talk to the game director you'll be able to get a shiny charm and with the shiny charm it really boosts your chances for shiny where originally it's one in four thousand and ninety six i believe and then if you have the shiny charm it goes from one in one thousand three hundred and sixty five so that is a huge change now to catch all of the pokemon my suggestion is to get a lot of quick balls now, I would tell you specifically where the quick balls are, but that actually is impossible. The only way I can tell you is that it is in the wild area. The way you can get them is by talking to the guys in the sunglasses, but they vary in location each day. So it's just more of your job is to run around. Once you find them, load up. Load up as much as you possibly can to be able to get those quick balls and use them like you wouldn't believe to be able to catch all of the Pokemon to then get that shiny charm. So I'm going to go over specifically what Serebii has right here. So 
what this means is if I run into 50 Pokemon, I have to defeat it or catch it. So a lot of you guys are going to be breeding. So I'm assuming a lot of it will be caught or hatched. You'll have a 1.5% chance for the shiny. If you do not have the shiny charm, it'll be one in 2048. If you have the shiny charm, it'll be one in 1024. So if you look at the chart, it's literally up right here. That's how it works. The more, more Pokemon you beat slash catch, the higher chance you have to be able to get that shiny. And that is literally the guide for you right there. So overall, that is all the different steps that it takes to become a competitive battler, to be a shiny hunter, and all of that in between. There's a lot that goes into it. It's a very tedious thing to do, but I suggest working with your friends, trading with your friends, helping each other out to be able to really get these Pokemon to get to their full potential faster. So if I, let's say I want to go for a, actually, I'll show you guys specifically what I'm doing right now. So if I go to my Pokemon right here, so I have a couple Pokemon that I'm trying to get shinies up, or not really shinies, I'm trying to get them ready for competitive. So I would be going for a Rookie right here, but I'm going to have a friend that's going to try to train with me, and he's going to go for Duraludon. We're both going to go for these competitive Pokemon, and once we pretty much get to almost our peak, or maybe our peak, but we get extra Pokemon of the max five IVs, we're just going to do a trade, so then we're able to go and have that Pokemon for each other. So now, not only do I have one, but I also have two, and it saved me a ton of time. So that's why it's important to be able to get those friends, message each other on Twitter. You guys can even use the YouTube comments if you guys want to be able to add other people as friends, so you guys can really help each other out to be able to get these competitive Pokemon or have a higher chance for a shiny. But that is all I have for you guys today. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe as well because I do have been starting to do a lot more live streaming. So if you guys are into live streams, you guys can find me right here. Also, if you guys are looking to do Wi-Fi battles, I will be bringing those to my channel as well and be doing some teaching and be having some fun as well because I'm not the best, but I know how it works and I think it'll be fun to learn together with you all. So if you guys are interested in that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you guys want to become a member, you guys have that option to be able to support my channel and use emojis, get a chance to battle me once every month. It'd be three battles. And then you'd also be mentioned in the comment section or you'd also be mentioned at the end of the video because you're helping support the channel. That's all the time I have for you guys today. I hope you guys found this video super helpful. If you did, share it as well. I'm going to give Ash Ketchum the nod to sign us out. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys the next one. Hey trainers, Ash Ketchum here to thank you for watching the Poke Resort. Become a Pokemon Master by subscribing to Austin's channel. Don't forget to see his other recent videos so you can watch them all. Pikachu and I have surfing lessons with Austin's Alolan Raichu. So, we'll catch you later. Ha! <laughs>